down, down. about a little after eight in the morning so time to begin uh, first off I want to talk about a package I received oh. Silbera U400 got a got a bunch of that now never shot with it I've shot the color Silvera film, which is cool. Uh, I have a roll of it in my AE1 here right now. So we'll finish shooting up this and then shoot through this and make a little video talking about it. But just got that in, so it's kind of exciting in a way. If you're into that kind of thing, buying old film. Which I very much am, as I've also got in the mail. Presto. Yeah. I don't know, something about this just screamed, you should, you should spend money on this. So I did, and now I have more film than I need, which I did before, but now I have more, more I guess. Recently, as you may know by the video I made about it and the few references, uh, recently moved up to Portland, a home of many things, but there's also like a very big bookstore here. So I picked up a book and first I've just got this because I like the binding of it quite a bit. And I do like photo books. Um, I wish I knew more about them and could talk about them better but I'm not Alex Soth, so I cannot do that. But I still like them. I like the idea of having a few, because one day I'm gonna get like a very nice coffee table, right? And then I'm just gonna have books on the coffee table. Because right now I have a lot of coffee table books, but no coffee table. So I'll have a nice coffee table, some nice coffee table books. People will come in and then I'll like kind of flip through it. Uh, and that's, that's the dream, really, that is my dream. So, <laughs> um, but I picked this up and I was kind of thumbing through it the other day and I stumbled upon like the series of images and I was like, I want to talk about this. Really good stuff overall and like a good diversity of work. Kind of looking through here, I don't know, I really just enjoy natural scenes like this. Like I think that there's so much more power in this scene for being what it is as opposed to like setting all this up and staging it. And I just like, oh, there's just so much depth to this image. You can see like little faces in the windows and stuff peering out and such. I like this a lot, the framing of the guy's face behind her face. And these guys are looking very skeptically. Very good, very good stuff. But we're not talking about this. There was a specific I figure I'll probably revisit this book a few more times as I like get more inspired by it, so I don't want to bury the lead too much. But we are going all the way over to... This photo is gorgeous. I love this, but this photo... We've got the, uh, the full spread treatment here. And this is what I'm talking about, things like shutter speed, aperture, ASA setting, all those are the different variables that control the light. This would be something of like a slower shutter speed, as you can see like the movement of the bowl here and the movement of the cape, I don't know what the professional term for this is, but all of this movement is jarred and it's looking like it's lagging, it's because there's like so much more time being spent on the exposure than the movement. So this is like a series of smaller movements throughout here. So it's almost like this 
so for the sake of the image, the bowl began back here and is now here. So this is like the shadow, the ghost of the bowl almost. Same with the cape here and the matador. Like they're no longer existing in this space, but there's still a, like an imprint of them being there. And I just think that that's kind of fascinating in a very poetic way. And then you'll see in this next few exposures what I mean more specifically. I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at this absolute beauty. So I don't really like car photography that much. Oh, that's good. That's actually really good coffee today. I'm not a huge fan of car photography as it stands, just because I feel like a lot of it's by the numbers and it's just like, oh, look at this cool car. Like, it just doesn't really do much for me. I do like Top Gear quite a bit, the old Top Gear and stuff like that, because they did a lot to like kind of exemplify certain aspects of a car and they do these like almost themed intros for each car, which I just really appreciated because it takes a lot of creative energy, I think. <clears throat> and to take like a photo of a car corner or something, like if that's your cup of tea, more power to you. I'm not trying to tell you that you're wrong. It's just, I'm gonna be honest, that does nothing for me. Something like this, it's not really about the car per se, it's more about the car involvement in this environment. And it's got this little excerpt here. It was taken in uh, 1955. It's this like quiet little street and they got, the uh, photographer got some, one of the local Mercedes-Benz dealers to paint a car red and calculate how fast it had to go through a one second exposure. Now, I'm thinking that it's starting here and moving this way it looks like, because I think this is like the windshield of the car. And this looks like the hood ornament, but I could be wrong and it could be going this way. I don't know, but anyway, I think it's a very fascinating image here. So this is taken like as a one second exposure. You can see there's people in the background that are standing still and not moving. And I think that that really adds to the overall effect of the image. Like this just looks like some kind of flash of light, which is what cars that go fast end up being sometimes. And it just adds like this supernatural feel to this kind of traditional looking image. Like the architectural style of this is not very modern. It's not postmodern. Like this is very traditional style architecture. And then you have this, this streak of light slashing through it. Very interesting. And then here's the car in question, I believe. And this image itself paired with this, I think is fantastic marketing for this car, honestly. First of all, the gold wing doors are beautiful. Um, only if it's like a two seater like this, cause like think like, I saw the other day I went up to a lake and someone had their Tesla or whatever with the gold wing doors in the back. And it was like a family van. I was like, that's kind of lame. <laughs> uh, but something like this, like a little roadster with them is cool. But I mean, this just, th there's so much going on in this overall scene. Like going back to what I was saying out here, if the idea is this is like a car just ripping through this quiet village, then this is it stopping the driver getting out to like get some food or gas or something like that, you know, like, and then all of the people from the village are coming to inspect this new thing. And I'm speculating here, but this is just what my mind thinks of when I look at this, but we've got the, the mom for this child, not baby, but child, just laying her child by the wayside to look at this car. And I think that the wardrobe of the child here pairing with this kind of red of the car is fantastic. You've got the skeptical old woman and old man back here looking, all the kids are observing each little part of the car because you know they're gonna talk about this at school or whatever. Like it's just, there's so much depth to this image that evokes so many more feelings than just, wow, what a cool looking car.
So I really enjoyed that quite a bit. And then the next series is kind of some more of these like streaks of light. But they used a different car, as you can tell. But I do like the formatting of these a lot because it looks a little bit more um, subdued, so to speak. It's not just the same images over and over again. I really like the lighting of this scene here. I like just like the little corners of the house lit here and kind of where the light's coming in and how it reflects off of the car right there. It adds just a little bit more dimension to the image. And I also enjoy this too because it just looks like a river almost. But it's a car. And then this one. This makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> I especially love this little excerpt here, but like just, <laughs> I mean, this looks like Photoshop gone. It's hilarious. And then this photo is just absolutely gorgeous. This reminds me of like old Top Gear videos of them ripping and roaring up like European hillsides. And uh, <coughs> All I think when I see this is, I want to be there, driving that car up that hill. That looks so cool. Forget running up hills, I'm going to drive up them. Um, and yeah, pretty much those were the images I wanted to talk about. I also just really like this because, I mean, it's a horse on a hill. Like, that's just gorgeous. And also, I do think, too, the, the framing of this I enjoy because... A lot of times I like to frame things a little bit lower, so to speak, and not center it as much because centered stuff just kind of, it's cool. Uh, certain subjects I feel like do need to be centered, but also sometimes I'm like, I need to see more of what's going on. I think like implementing the sky here, especially when there's like just this ethereal light coming in on this horse is fantastic because it adds for a nice backdrop. I've just really been digging this book and as I flip through it more, I find more things that I really want to talk about. But those images in particular really stuck out to me because typically the idea is we're gonna shoot with the uh, higher, the lower speed, higher time value shutter speeds only when we need to for the sake of we need more light in the image. But that was viewed more as a creative decision of <clears throat> this is what I want to implement. This is the look that I want to achieve. So we're going to get this car, we're going to paint it red, and then we're going to figure out how fast it needs to go for it to look this way and how long my shutter needs to be open for it to look this way. And as somebody who like just snaps photos because I think they look cool, you know, in that moment, the idea of kind of like planning out this image, still in a natural setting, but planning it out to achieve this kind of supernatural and surreal look is very fascinating to me and it shows like a greater understanding of the craft. And I don't know, I just figured it was worth talking about. Anyway, wanted to talk about that briefly. If you enjoyed that, let me know, because I'll uh, go through different parts of that book as I find them interesting. I do have another few like little photo books and a lot of like old pamphlets and stuff I could go through if you're into that kind of thing. So looking back at it, I think it's kind of cool and it's an interesting like time capsule like thing. And it just adds a different layer of importance to kind of restoring these things, cameras and such. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And yeah, stay tuned. Got more stuff coming. So, cheers.